All right, so what you got here is a nice little reaction. You've got magnesium, solid, reacting with oxygen, gas. Now, just so you know in the future, a lot of these reactions will not have the phases for like the balancing purposes. It doesn't make a difference for how you balance stuff, but just in case you, you know, don't see them. Now, let's, let's do this. The way I like to do this, this one's really simple, but it, it shows you how to start doing this. The arrow is our dividing line. Bruno, pay attention. Now, the arrow is our dividing line. Okay? How many magnesiums do we have on the left side, the reactant side? You have one magnesium. How many oxygens? Two. Two oxygens. All right. Now, on the right side, what's the deal here? One magnesium, one oxygen. One magnesium, one oxygen. Okay. It's not that bad. This is, this is relatively straightforward right here. Now, obviously this does not work out, correct? So, what I would recommend you do first, you balance everything that is not an oxygen or a hydrogen. Is, is, is the one thing that's not oxygen or hydrogen balanced here? You have magnesium on both sides. Next, let's do oxygen. So, you've got two here, one here. Here's what we're going to do. If you write a two out in front of that, you are just multiplying now magnesium by two. You've got one magnesium times two. How many does that give you? Two. So it gives you a two. What about oxygen? Two. 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 All right. It applies to both. So you've got two magnesiums, two oxygens. Magnesium's not balanced, so you put a two there. Two and two. You're done. Hang on. Whoa. What's the question? What? Uh, over here? Because this two applies to magnesium and to oxygen. It's like it's like the distributive property where is that what it is? Distributive yeah. property? Yeah. Where you multiply, you know, this times that times that. Yes, right. What? I put I put a two out in front here, that gives you two magnesiums then. Because it's it's basically like writing out so it's like saying two times one is what it's like saying, okay? Or like over here, it's like saying two times. So that's where you get mg, you know, oh, and you've got two of those and two of those basically, all right? Yeah. So I can write mg two and then just have the action. Because then it's a different formula. Um, now here's this is the reason we do this because what this does is keep the formula the same. If we were to write something like mg two o or mgo two, that's that's not magnesium oxide. That's something else. That changes the formula of it. So we can never change these subscripts. Subscripts never ever change. Oh, I don't like to put a big two in the middle. No, and you can never you can never put a coefficient here. That is just that's incorrect. You just can't do it. Alright? So like I said, this is I do apologize, we're going really fast, but we just gotta do this. Now next. Alright, this is our next reaction. So I'll write that down. If you want to start ignoring the phases at this point for like right now, that's okay. I won't. Alright. So there's our reaction now. All right, now, let's just again, you make your dividing line, you figure out what you got. So on the left side, how many zincs? One zinc, one hydrogen, one chlorine, right? Everybody agree? On the right side, you've got one zinc, two chlorines, two H's. Okay. Now, uh, what should we balance first here? What do you want to balance first? Chlorine. I'd do chlorine first. Always do chlorine. I mean, well, you always do things that are not balanced first, obviously. Zinc's balanced. Now, you, I say wait to do hydrogen. Always wait. Just It's easier that way, trust me. So, let's do chlorine. So, you've got two chlorines over here. You've got one over here, right? Yeah. So, the move here, then, would be to put a two out in front of this. Because what that is telling you, you're going to double the number of hydrogens and the chlorines. So that that goes and changes to two. That changes to two. 
So now you're done, aren't you? Yeah. This is easy. Okay. That one was not bad. What questions do you have, though? There have to there. I know there's got to be questions. Mm -hmm. This is good. We'll get to the hard ones. No. There's actually an extra credit one on the website right now. Uh, that is ridiculously hard. I'll give you extra credit for doing it. How much? Now, uh, sh let's try. Iron yeah, let's try this one. Now, yeah, this is actually how iron rusts. The oxidation of iron. Iron plus oxygen produces iron oxide. No, that's one solid. Yeah, it's a solid. That's rust. That's the that's rust you see. That nasty orange, brown, whatever color it is stuff. Red. Alright. Let's do this one now. They're getting slightly harder little by little. Just there's a there's a plan to all of us. So you've got one iron, you've got two oxygens. Over here you've got two irons, three oxygens. Alright. Thoughts? How's this all gonna work out? So what? What is your initial thought here? Put three in front of the O and two in front of the O, so they make six. And then do two to the left and then front of iron. You're put four. Mm -hmm. Bam. So. <laughs> I got it. I actually did something. Yeah, I do. All right, all right. Who thinks they're? Who's totally positive they got this right? I do. Okay. Since you're sitting right in front of me, let's hear what you have to say. Two in front of the iron on the left. Okay, two there. And then you put three in front of the O to the left, and then on the right side you put two in front of the O. You oh, can't wait. put something oh, in front. Oh wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait. Oh, see, okay. So, th so this doesn't work out. Put four in front of the FE to the left. No, no. Yeah, four. All right, let's let's let's. No, no, I got it. <laughs> it's there. All right, it's I a know. four. So you put a four there now. Now. Then you put a three. Wait, wait. So that changes to four. Then you want to put a three in front of the O. And then you put a two in front of the other side. So now let's look at this. Four oh. irons. What's that change our oxygens to? Six. six. Then what do we got over here? Four. And six. Four, six. <laughs> all right. Now let's explain all this. Shh. Now what we did. See this one's tricky because your initial thought was probably to say, well. You've got one iron here, you got two irons initially over here, let's just put a two in front of it. Well, and I'll, I'll rewrite it here just to show you. So your initial thought is probably to say, well, let's put, let's put a two here, right? But that doesn't work because when you put a two here, I mean, then you look at the oxygens. They're not equal, are they? So you, and there's no way, you cannot do halves here. You can't do like 1.5. Okay, that would be the easiest thing to do, but you can't do that. So, since they got to be whole numbers, that two, it will never be possible because you'd have to put at least, you know, a two or a three here. So, then you will never be able to get two irons. So they have to be the same on both sides. So that's why this doesn't work. Now, uh, with this one being done, let's see. Ah. You're trying to scare us. Yeah, this this is the correct coefficients. All right, four, three, two, and then if there is no coefficient, if there's nothing written in front, what is it? Obviously, one. what number is it? Is it is one. All right, so this will be uh, the last one I think we'll do right now. Then I'll let you practice this. So write this down. This one's kind of long. This involves a lot of complicated stuff that you're going to have to think about here. Well, no, you got to think about what the parentheses mean, too, and what the subscripts mean and all that jazz. Parentheses mean you have to distribute. Yep. So, there's our equation. All right, now. This one, this one's a little tricky. So let's let's split it up. Now, 
First step, we've got to figure out how many of everything we have. Let's make sure you can do that. Now, hydrogen. Two. How many hydrogens total do we have on the left side? Six. No, five. We've got two. Five. Six. Well, let's, five. You've got two here. Then remember, this three gets distributed to the O and then to the H. So you have three hydrogens here, two hydrogens here. Five. So you have five hydrogens. See, this is the part where you've got to keep everything straight. Now, how many sulfurs do you have? One. One sulfur. Now, how many oxygens? Seven. Seven. Four there, three there, so seven oxygens. And then how many borons? Yeah. One. Because remember, that three only applies to what is in parentheses. It does not apply to the boron. All right. Now let's do the other side. You've got, and I want to try to, I'm going to match up the columns here. So how many hydrogens do we have first? Two. You've only got two H's. How many sulfurs? Three. three. You've got three sulfurs here. All right, because remember that three applies to the O and to the S. So three sulfurs. Now how many oxygens? Thirteen. Thirteen. Four times three. Twelve. Plus one there, plus that one oxygen. So you've got... 13 O's, and then you've got two borons. So, give this one a shot. I'll oh, try it. Go ahead. This is, this is the problem solving part that you got to get good at. Using a pencil for this is generally the better idea because you're going to erase a lot. Uh, you will erase a lot, and that's fine. I have to. It takes me a while to do these. No, this, these are all these are all good. I'll actually, I'm actually going to pass it for this one. I don't know what Yes. Put two in front of this one. Yeah. You'd have two Bs. Yep, you'd have two Bs. And then you'd six have H's. six O's and six H's. All right? You're multiplying everything. I got I to gotta remember this one. All right. Wait, you don't know how to do it? I just don't remember which, what the numbers were off the top of my head. Actually, I have to figure this out just like everybody else. All right. Any ideas yet? No, sir. Let me give you. Let me give you a hint. By the way, I, I kind of forgot to actually tell you this. This well, it just might help. I don't necessarily like to say it, but it can help. Um, if you want, you notice how you've got sulfate SO4 on the left side and sulfate SO4 on the right side as a whole thing. Yeah. Well, what you can do if you really want, you can just imagine. You could almost say SO4. You've got one of them, and then over here you've got three of them. If that makes it a little bit easier for you, you know, if that helps a little bit, you can. But then you've got to you've got to change all of the other calculations to track for oxygens and all that. So I leave that up to you whether you want to do that or not. This is going to be more of an acquired. Is it easier? Not necessarily. It just might make sense to some people that way. This is one of those things where you're going to kind of develop your system for it. I mean, I could tell you a rigid, this is how I want you to do it every time, but I've found that everybody kind of does their own thing with this and it usually ends up working out. I mean, I can give you exact guidelines if you want, but it's, sometimes you don't like those. So it ticks off half the class. <laughs> so, anybody have any idea where to start here? No. No one has a clue? Give Abby like a one more minute. All right. What? What? Can't do it. You mean put a three out front of here? You cannot. You can never put something in between in, in a compound. It, it can only be out in front. All right, only in front. Now, let's look here. All right, let's. Th this is going to be trial and error because I truthfully don't remember the coefficients either. 
Trial and error. How much time do we have? All right. So let's. What I would say we could start with. Uh, well, I mean, this is how I would do it. How many uh, How many bees do you have over here? You got two. You got one here. So try two. See if that. See if that does. All right. Literally, this is how you're gonna do this. You're just gonna have to start if it's not obvious, and you're just gonna have to try. Yeah. He raised his hand. So hey, raise his hand first. What? Yeah. Yes. Yes. What? Yes, that's what that's what I'm gonna show you. That's why I want to show you this. Now, we just put a two out in front of, and I'm gonna cross these sulfates out so as to not confuse now. We just put a two in front of B. That means we now have two Bs. What does that do to our O's? That means we're going to basically be doing two times three here. Okay, so it's basically like saying two times three. So this becomes not a three, but a six now. So we have how many O's total on the left side now? Six plus four, 10. How many H's? Two times three. Plus two, eight. Anybody confused where those numbers came from? Yeah. All right, two times three gives us six oxygen plus the four over here, okay? And then for H, it was uh, two times three gives us six hydrogens plus the two over there. It's really easy to forget when they're in separate compounds. It's really easy to forget. Do not forget though, because you'll get it all goofed up. Now, does that bring us any closer to, uh, to doing anything here? No. Not really, no. But let's think about this now. All right, what is what is goofed up now? Well, we've got. Let's look at sulfur next. Remember, do let me give you a hint. When you've got water or something like this by itself, wait. If it's got hydrogen and oxygen, that's the last thing you do. So, so let's look at sulfur next. You've got one here, three here, right? So why don't we put a three out in front of this one? Because now, let's change sulfur first. That gives us three sulfurs. Now we got to readjust though for all the, you know, for everything else. So this now gives us three times two hydrogens plus, so six hydrogens plus what? How many here? Plus six. So gives us 12. What's that do to our O's? 12 O's plus. Six O's. Because yeah. three times S1 there. Because remember, this three gets multiplied. You multiply all of them by three. Okay? And if there's nothing there, it's like saying there's a one. Okay? Now, we pretty much got everything good on this side. We happen to have an H2O over here, right? Yeah. Just sitting on its own. And we have hydrogen and oxygen not balanced here. So that there's a reason that we do these last. Because now you might be able to figure out a number to, uh, to put here that would make everything work out nicely. Five. So what do we think here? Five. Five. Well, how about this? Let's balance out hydrogen and see if it works out. The reason I say hydrogen is because you've got your oxygens here, all right? And since you have those separately, I say wait. Always do the thing that is in, always do the thing that's in separate compounds last. So let's let's balance hydrogen only. So what are we going to put out in front of hydrogen? 6. 6. So that now gives us 12 hydrogens. How many O's does that give us? Four times three, plus six. Is everything balanced now? Yeah. This this takes a while. I'm not going to pretend that this does not take a while. But it is. But if you if you go simply, you follow this, the steps. It's no problem. Is this hard as it's going to get? 